In this W1 game creator video tutorial series, we'll be going over the basics of using the engine, from detailing what each of the main editors do, to learning how to create your very first game with NPCs and quests. In this final part, we'll be looking at players' controls and inputs, learning how to modify the main playable character and their party, as well as taking a look at controls and input triggers, which are needed for players to be able to interact with your game. Although you can make a game using the default controls, actions, and party members, they won't work for every style of gameplay. This doesn't mean that you should abandon all of the default options, but rather build upon them to create something fitting for your game. Let's start by taking a look at the main player and how the party system works. Your game will typically have actors that the player can control. We refer to these as party members. There can be multiple party members in your game, such as having multiple people playing the game locally, local co-op, or having multiple actors a single player can switch between. Together, these party members form what is known as the party. To begin, click on the players and party members icon on the main toolbar to open the players and party window. To the left is the party member list, which shows all of the members of your party. You can use the buttons to the right of this list to add and remove party members, respectively. The party section allows you to set the amount of money the entire party has. The party member section is where you set each party member's name, which player they're assigned to, whether they're a member of the party from the very start of the game, as well as modify their actor properties, such as their appearance and behavior. The experience growth section allows you to set the starting and ending levels a party member has, as well as the amount of experience they must gain before leveling. The magic progression section is where you set any new magic or skills you want a party member to learn once they've reached a specified level. Lastly, the statistic progression section is used to set how much a party member's statistics increase with each new level. You can also change the name of a party member, add or remove party members, as well as learn magic and increase experience at any time via scripting. In addition, many scripting events and use values have options to select main, party, or specific party members. Main will always reference the actor currently being controlled by player one. Selecting party will run that script on every party member currently in the party. While playing, if you have multiple party members currently in your party, they will follow the main player around. The main player is the actor set at the highest position in the party member list by default, but you can change the main player with scripting events, like the changed control member event. Another key part of making your game is determining which buttons perform each action and what those actions do. Inputs in Double One Game Creator are separated into two categories, controls and input triggers. A control is a predefined button or multiple buttons that links a raw input to an actionable command. An input trigger, on the other hand, is what holds the scripting triggers for that control. You can click on the controls and input triggers icons on the main toolbar to open their respective windows. Let's start by looking at controls. The controls window is pretty straightforward. You can create new controls by clicking the add control button at the top of the window. You can then change its name, add an optional image to represent the control in editor, and also assign which buttons will activate the control for up to four players. You can also delete the control by clicking the remove button in the top right. To add a new input for a control, simply press the add button besides the player you wish to add the input to. This will bring up the input window where you can specify the input you want to activate the control. Double One Game Creator supports a variety of input methods, including keyboard and mouse, touch and gyro for mobile devices, and game pads. Once finished, Click the OK button to save your controls and close the window. Now let's take a look at input triggers. This is where the scripting triggers are stored that will run when a defined control is pressed. You can group different input triggers together to create input sets, which can then be enabled or disabled to restrict which actions the player can and cannot perform. You can also assign input sets to specific players if you want each player to have different controls. Some input sets are enabled automatically under certain conditions such as being in a vehicle or while the player is navigating an interface. You can change which input sets are used under these special circumstances by opening the game settings window and editing the default input sets to the right. The list to the left of the window contains all of your input sets. You can use the buttons directly above this list to add or remove input sets and organize existing ones. Once you've selected an input set, you can change its name, specify whether it should be turned on from the start, add new control combinations, and edit existing ones. You can double click an existing control combination to edit its properties and press the delete key on your keyboard to remove it. You can also right click them 
to perform other operations as well, such as cutting, copying, and pasting. To create a new input trigger for the selected input set, click the Add Control Combination button at the top. This will bring up the Control Combination window. Selecting the blank button to the left will bring up the input window, which we talked about earlier when discussing controls, where you can specify an input to activate the trigger or select one of your predefined controls. Once a control or input is selected, you then need to click the pressed, pressed and released, or released buttons in order to add the control to the sequence underneath. These buttons determine at which point the scripting triggers should activate. For example, if you want a button to move your player left when the left control is pressed, you would need to create two control combinations, one for when the left control is pressed to start the movement, and another for when the left control is released to stop the movement. A control combination can also have multiple controls in its sequence. This means that it won't activate unless all the specified controls are pressed in the order they appear, like in a fighting game, where the player can perform special attacks by inputting different combos. You can use the delay setting to require pauses between control presses, and right-click a control in the control sequence to remove it. Once you've set up the control sequence, you can click the Edit Script button to open the script editor and create a script that will run whenever the input trigger is activated. After finishing your script, click the OK button on the script editor and control combination windows to save the input trigger. Now let's take a brief look at the scripting for the movement-based input triggers inside the regular game input set. We'll start with the left and right control combinations. You'll notice there are two sets of each, one for when you press the button and another for when you release the button. Double-click the left press control combination and then click the Edit Script button to open the script editor. The script starts with a Change Movement X event, which moves the player along the horizontal axis. Minus 1 moves the player left, which is what the event is set to, whereas 1 moves the player right, and is what the right pressed control combination is set to. Setting this value to 0 means the player will stop moving. This is then followed by a change facing direction based on movement event, which is pretty self explanatory. It will change the facing direction of the player to match the direction they're moving in. Before we move on, it's important to distinguish between tile-based movement and pixel-based movement. Events like change movement X, Y, and Z, change velocity, change turning, change strafing, as well as push and slide, are all pixel-based, which means collisions between actors and other objects will trigger. Tile-based movements, on the other hand, such as walk to location, walk to closest location, walk to cursor, and take specific movements, will sometimes not trigger collisions between actors and other objects, as their movements are calculated prior to taking action. Tile-based movements are ideal for AI-controlled actors and actors that require pathfinding, whereas pixel-based movements tend to work better for vehicles, physics, and player-controlled actors. Next, let's take a look at the script for the left release control combination. This time, the script starts with a comparison branch event that checks to see if the player is moving left. The right release control combination Check to see if the player is moving right. If they are, then a change movement X event sets the player's movement to zero to stop them from moving, and a change facing direction based on movement event updates the player's facing direction to reflect their movement. The up and down press release control combinations work in a similar way, except instead of using a change movement X event to move the player horizontally, they use a change movement Y event to move the player vertically, minus one moving the player upwards and one moving the player downwards. The last movement-based input trigger we're going to look at is the jump pressed control combination. This script starts with a comparison branch event that checks to see if the player's current Z velocity is equal to zero. This ensures that the player cannot jump if the player is already in the air. This is then followed by a change velocity Z event, which will cause the player to move upwards on the Z axis, causing the actor to jump. Before we wrap up this video tutorial, let's use everything we've learned to create a new input. The functionality we'll be adding is a quick save and quick load feature that will allow players to save and load their game progress without needing to enter the pause menu. To start, let's create two new controls. Click on the controls icon on the main toolbar to open the controls window, and then click on the add control button twice to create two new controls. Name the first control save game and the second control load game. Then click on the add button besides player one for the save game control and press F5 on your keyboard to input the key. Do the same for the load game control, except pressing F9 instead. Then click OK on the controls window to save your controls and close the window. Next, click on the input triggers icon on the main toolbar to open the input triggers window. 
select the regular game input set, and then click on the Add Control Combination button to create a new input trigger. Select the blank button to the left, and then select Save Game from the defined control drop down menu at the bottom. Click the Pressed and Release button to add the control combination, and then click the Edit Script button to open the script editor. We don't want to overwrite any existing save data with our Quick Save and Quick Load buttons, so we'll be using a different save file slot. By default, the Action RPG template uses save slots 0 to 3. To ensure we don't overwrite any of them, we'll create and use save slot 4. Click on the Expand Events button at the bottom of the script editor and double click the Save Game to Slot event under the Game category. Set the slot number to 4 and click OK. Then add a Display Log Text event under the System category and type an appropriate message that tells the player the game has been saved. Now that we've made our Save Game input trigger, let's move on to our Load Game input trigger. Add a new control combination, select the blank button to the left, and then select Load Game from the Defined Control drop down menu. Click the Press and Release button to add the control combination, and then click the Edit Script button to open the script editor. Add a Save Game Exists branch event under the Game category, and set the slot number to 4. Then add a Load Game from Slot event, and also set the slot number to 4. This script will check if a quick save exists, and if it does, it will load the quick save. If one doesn't exist, then the script does nothing. And that's it. We've now successfully created our quick save and quick load feature. You can try this out by selecting the test game button on the main toolbar and clicking OK on the testing options window that pops up. Once in game, press F5 to create a quick save, and then press F9 to load it. This concludes the final part of our video tutorial series detailing the basics of Double One Game Creator. If you enjoyed this video tutorial series and would like to see more like this in the future, then please let us know in the comment section below, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you never miss a future upload.